Guys, what's up? We're at it again. We got a 2011 uh, Chevy Impala. It's got a reduced engine power on it. So let's get in here and check it out. Let's pull codes first. All right, what do we got here? All right, let's go current codes. Let's see what's on the system right now. We have oxygen sensor codes, uh, heater, uh, sensor two, sensor one, uh, heater resistance, oxygen sensor two. Uh, I believe that these were on before time, ahead of, I mean before, but we'll figure out what's going on. A lot of oxygen sensor codes. So we got a camshaft sensor code, and what I'm looking at right now is camshaft, manifold, the map sensor. We got a fuel tank pressure sensor. All these are looking like five volt reference sensors. And I'm pretty sure they are. There it is, five volt reference right there uh, on the very end. Oxygen sensor circuit closed loop performance sensor one. So we're I'm gonna be looking at the five volt reference is what, what I'm chasing. I'm not really chasing oxygen sensor codes, but if it turns out that's shutting down the oxygen sensors, it's cool. It should have no check engine lights on this car. So we're gonna be looking at the camshaft, the map sensor. We're looking for a five volt reference. So let's look at all these sensors and see if we see any wiring issues. All right, the, uh, the, coolant, the, uh, the high pressure switch is right there. As you see, the wires are pretty good. I already felt them. I already felt them up. These wires are looking good. It doesn't have a throttle body coat on there. Yeah, we'll have to look at that wire. He said someone someone came out here and he said there was a wire that he he found and yeah i see it let me show you there's a wire down here you see that wire going to the sensor right here this is the camshaft the uh what is that the uh the solenoid the cam the camshaft solenoid so that's probably it all right right over here we see some wires that are bare and they were touching the metal uh, insulation is off of those wires and they were touching but I cleared the codes and the codes came right back so I'm gonna have to dig into that harness so let's get underneath and we'll see how far it goes back all that and what do you want to look around for when you get a 5 volt reference when you get a, a wiring uh, issue you believe you start looking at the wires you try not to touch too much look all around the harness for parts of the wire that are too close to metal touching metal and you might get lucky and just pull that pull it away from the metal and you'll see a cut and uh that's what we've been looking for i looked all over i didn't see anything on top so we're going to the bottom we're going to follow that wire right there the one that's the, ins the insulation is off camshaft the camshaft <sighs> sensor so let's get underneath here and take a look Normally on these cars, I usually find the problem around here, around the front of the car. Look at that. You guys hear that? You guys hear that? Let me do it again. I got lucky. I just said that too. But most of the time, this is where I find them. Look at that. Did you hear that? So our problem, one of our problems is here. There it is. The fuel pump's kicking on. Let me get my flashlight a little closer. Hear that? I'm gonna move the wire again. So we have a problem right here somewhere. 
It's located. All right, I'm noticing I'm pulling the wire this way to hear the noise. There it is. There's not a lot going on over there, but I'm trying to find something touching the metal. There is something right there. It could be those wires right there that look like the same color as that camshaft. Wait, what is this over here? It might go up there. Let me take a look at it. I'll find it. I'll let you know. All right, I pulled this wiring harness off and the wire, the problem is right here in this wire, somewhere in this area right here. So let me, I'm gonna take a better look at these wires. I think we got one that's kind of burnt through two wires and touching, but I can't get it to make the noise anymore. No matter what I do. And normally I would have been able to do it and I was messing with this section right here. And I didn't see anything. So let me go in there and clear codes. What I know for certain is, uh, what I know for certain is these codes will come back immediately. And then I get in there and I find that wire. But yeah, let's pull codes. All right, it starts up, check engine light is on. Let's go back. I'm using my all tail today because my Maximus is uh, is in the shop getting repaired. I totally shattered the screen. Okay. Yesterday the car would have cut off. So let's read codes again. See what disappeared. Something's gone. All right, so yeah, we got them all gone. You see the oxygen sensor codes did not go away or the EVAP or the purge solenoid because they weren't related to this problem. Uh, they just weren't related. So, yeah, let me find that wire, fix that wire, and then if he wants, we can, we can tackle the heater codes. All right, what we're going to do up here is we unplugged it. We unplugged it from the cam and all these wires are burnt up someone put a sleeve on it so it wouldn't touch metal but it was still touching metal so we're going to cut this wire replacing the entire strand from here all the way over here and all those wires right here in the front were touching together because it got hot uh and it burnt not only the area where the plug was it burnt it down the line and it started burning into other wires and they started touching. Uh, so we're gonna replace it. Look at all the wires really good while you're down here uh, and get it fixed up that way. So, and then we'll run and pull codes once again. So we got all our major codes gone. We have oxygen sensor codes that are coming up, but we will worry about that later. Let's go ahead and get these wires repaired and stowed away really nice. Stowed away, I mean, uh, protectors on them, um, stowed away, uh, what's another word for stow, uh, and put away really nicely so they won't going to be rubbing anything or interfering with belts and pulleys and things like that, fans and moving parts. Yeah, we found it. <sighs> All right, so this is the wire we're dealing with, these two wires for that cam. As you guys already know so we're just going to find them we're just going to replace this wire all together i'm not dealing with this so let me pull it out of there and we're going to cut this tape off this little section of tape right here off too all right speed it through Hello. <laughs> All right, now this was the culprit piece. You see, there's a sticky spot right there. So I'm gonna look at this wire really good.
You can, if you run your fingers down the wire like that, you can possibly even feel where the brake is. I run my fingers down all of them. Any rough spots, I'll inspect. But we're going to replace these. Uh, we're going to replace these two wires right here. It goes to the cam sensor. And that's the one that's all burnt up. It's all burnt up. Right like that. All metal. All the knees were touching. And that just shorted out the 5 volt reference. So there's our 5 volt reference code. That's our map sensor code. That's everything. These wires go into the computer uh, individually, but they run on the same five volt reference circuit within the PCM. So uh, it's just shutting down the whole system. Uh, five volt reference is pretty important. I've come to uh, come to learn. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna snip these two wires somewhere about up here somewhere. And we're gonna run a whole new wire. Hey, he's just replaced the whole entire wiring harness. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I can fix the wire. If it's they're so bad and so burnt up that I have to change the entire wiring harness. Let's say if I found like 10, 15 wires that were just burnt up. Yeah, I'm probably not taking any chances and I'm going to replace the entire wiring harness. But on something like this, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to repair the wire, save you some money on the wiring harness and the labor to install a new wiring harness uh i can repair this i can repair problems like this and you know a quarter of the time it takes to do a wiring harness you just gotta have you just gotta think it out and find the problem yeah we're just gonna do the wires man let's fix the wires snip snip gone they put a little sleeve on you see that they put a little sleeve on it it's cute okay. fix it. Okay. all right guys we already pulled the jack stands out from underneath it let me just show you what we did we wrapped up all the wires of course and we put a new protector on it all the way, all the way up here. So it's stowed away really nice. Shouldn't have any problems out of that. And let's go check the engine lights. See if we get all the engine lights off or not. Or did those oxygen sensors stay on? I don't have any check engine lights on anymore. Let's shut it off and start it up again, which is a good thing. Check engine light goes off immediately. All right, guys, this is real stuff. Well, we're done with this one. It was messy underneath there. There's a lot of oil and shit everywhere. But, uh, yeah, we got this one wrapped up. It was actually pretty easy. Actually, this kind of work, finding shorts and shit like that, is actually pretty easy work. All you really need is, is schematics. So get yourself some all data, some Mitchell, shop key, something with wiring schematics. And that way you can find what you're looking for. Uh, it's running like a top again. No check engine lights. Happy camper. This is Hayes Bowl Water Repair, man. We're in Jackson, Mississippi. Peace. Just in case. Just in case. <laughs> I'm out. Peace. So what's helpful is you go to the schematic and you'll start looking for all your 5 volt reference. Reference 1. And you'll highlight them all highlight them all okay now that we checked them uh, there's the look at there guys there's the AC refrigerant that's one of those codes we had let's follow this other trail see where that leads us there's our other code our fuel tank pressure sensor all 5 volt reference uh, we didn't have a pedal position sensor code that popped up. 
We did have an oil pressure sensor code that came up. Sorry, I didn't catch that on the video. There's our map sensor code right there. All right, so yeah, we got, uh, and I'm looking for the camshaft. That's what I'm looking for now because I didn't see it yet. Let's see if I missed anything. There it is right there. There's the camshaft code. So we got all of them. And all of them are checked here. Five volt reference. Five volt reference. Five volt reference. Let's minimize the screen. Let's see what it looks like. It looks like that. Okay, you see this over here, the camshaft. Uh, let's see what this is again. That is the engine oil pressure and the map sensor. There's the engine control module down here as well. It just kind of splits off engine control module, engine control module, engine control module. That's what you're looking at. So we check those and it splits off three more ways. Accelerator pedal. I'm not worried about that one because that one didn't show up on the trouble code, but the fuel tank did. The fuel tank pressure sensor. And of course the AC pressure sensor as well. So yeah. If you got a wire shorting out or doing something stupid, uh, short the ground, short the voltage, it's going to affect uh, it's going to affect the five volt reference circuit, which is inside the computer. It's going to affect all the sensors, and that's why you got all those five volt reference codes because it's affecting, let's call it the controller inside the. It's that's it. It's affecting the 5 volt reference circuit inside the PCM is the point of this. You really don't want to start changing, you know, high pressure sensors on the AC, then the camshaft, and then and start replacing part after part after part, uh, hoping that you can fix a problem. Find the problem, find the bad wire, fix the bad wire. Uh, instead of, you know, that's a lot of money you're spending. This sensor, that sensor, that sensor over here. These two sensors down here. Uh, don't gas test, guys. So, yeah. You, if any one of these uh, sensors gets shorted out or you got a wiring problem, it's touching ground or short to voltage or something, it's going to affect the 5-volt reference thingamajig inside the PCM, which is you know, which is important for these five volt sensors because that regulates it. That little generator regulator uh, is supplying that five volt reference. So you don't want nothing to get shorted out. Otherwise it'll shut it down or you'll have limited functionality if something is shorted out and it'll short out all the sensors and you'll get codes on all or most of the sensors. Just something to keep a... Uh, it's just something to uh, be aware of when you see multiple codes and you're trying to track one down. Or when you see multiple codes and you're trying to fix a problem, don't change parts. Just look around for the look around on the wiring harness and uh, and see if you can find a break in the wire. Follow the follow the follow the harness. Follow the harness and uh, you'll eventually find your problem. And then you'll be hooked on doing stuff like this. You'll be hooked. Man, I gotta get me some schematics, man. <laughs> yeah, and it's all, it's, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. It's like you're a detective, if you like that kind of thing. So anyways, guys, having fun and making money. Yeah, so yeah, everything is inside the engine computer. Uh, some systems, they actually split off. They have the 5-volt reference line come out, and then there'll be a splice, and they'll splice into other sensors with one wire. Uh, but in this particular model, that it does not split off. It's all individual wires. Everything is dealt with within the engine computer like that. So it's all connected in, inside the engine computer. 
instead of external splices, if that makes sense. Okay, guys, and that's it. Keys. Hey, get the keys, please. Good boy. Give me the keys. Good boy. Go outside. You want to go outside? Huh? Okay, you can go.